seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. It's Nish. I'm joining with Drew, and today we're gonna be going over which 2022 free agents that are current that were Texans this past year. Should we keep them or should we let them go? And we're just gonna like just go over like the main ones. And uh, we're just gonna give a quick shout out to Bone Crusher underscore Gamer 5 who suggested this video idea. Um, so if you guys have any videos that you guys want us to make. Uh, just let us know in the comments below. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. So, um, so as you all know, Nick Casario went on a frenzy this last offseason. Um, he signed, like, I don't know, that had to be a record-setting number of players. So, But there's a lot of noble, notable names that are free agents, unrestricted free agents, um, this upcoming free agency. Um, most notably, Terod Taylor, David Johnson, Malik Collins, Desmond King, Christian Kirksey, Cam Gucher Hill, Danny Amendola, Chris Conley, Demarcus Walker, Justin Reed, um, Chris Moore, Jordan Akins, and Jacob Martin. And there it has some news. Some news has come out regarding some of these free agents. Apparently, Jacob Martin is not expected to return. To the Texans, um, after having some contract discussions during the season, per Aaron Wilson and the Texans hope to re-sign defensive tackle Malik Collins, per Aaron Wilson. So, um, Drew, out of some of the names I mentioned, are who are the guys that you want, would like to keep, or would would you be fine letting go? Um, start with the first guys that I want to keep. The main three guys I would want to keep would be Malik Collins. Desmond King and Justin Reed, and I really think we can keep those guys because those are simply just the three most talented free agents. The Texans are going through a rebuilding phase where they need to keep and build off of the talent that they have on their roster. You know, they did have success from players like Carmen Grugier Hill, who kind of had a little bit of a breakout season there. Christian Kirksey played well for the time that he was in, but right now. But the way Lovey Smith has done and with his defense, I feel like a linebacker position is very replaceable for him. He seemed to be very comfortable with any like the eight guys of linebackers that he had on the roster at the beginning of the season. He ended up going with his best three guys. Those guys played somewhat well, um, not necessarily in the run defense, and that's where I think the Texans really need to improve. They need to find better ways to stop the run. But Malik Collins had a fantastic season for the Texans. He brings up quite a few pass rushing moves. He's more of a pass rusher, not necessarily of that run stopping defensive tackle the Texans had in the past with DJ Reader, Vince Wilford, and Malik Collins is a very good pass rusher from the interior defensive lineman position. He could be a three tech in any four three system. Let's we'll see what the Texans decide to do defensively. I think they'll do a lot of the same. Maybe build off of what they were good off and add some new things in there. Lee Collins is very solid, and then, like I said, Desmond King, I think he's a really, really talented corner. Now, the thing is, Tommy or Thomas did fantastic in the slot, and I think Desmond King also projects it way better in the slot. Texans are going to have to figure out what to do there. Desmond King is a very, very versatile player. You know, you never know. He could um, play outside, more of a cover three shell, cover four shell. He could be asked to go to nickel if Tommy or Thomas were to go down. So he could go to play a little safety if you want him to. I just think that's a very valuable player to have on your team. And then no no more value comes from a player like Justin Reed, who was the team captain, I believe, one of the leaders of the defense, a guy who has talked so highly about the city of Houston, how much he loves it. And it seems like the Texans... Angel Serene may have some mutual interest here. It was reported that at the beginning of the offseason that he may not come back, but seemingly Justin Reed loved the hire in Lovey Smith, so I would like to see if the two could come to an agreement. I think that it was kind of a rough last two seasons for him and the entire Texas defense as a whole, so I'm not going to pin too much of the blame on Justin Reed. He definitely needs to get better, but he brings a lot of energy, physicality, and is a really big leader for the team. So, like I said, those three guys, I think they're most talented and deserve a contract extension for the Texans. Yeah, and 
there there's a lot of um also some other names i guess from the wide receiver standpoint um chris moore he had some plays for us but i don't know if he'd he'd be someone we'd resign um danny amendola was actually a, a really surprise um like signing to me because i just like the direction where we're going he's like currently 36 years old but he balled out for us so if Mills would like to keep like a, if like Nick Casario would like to have a veteran wide receiver on the team, um, then then Danny Amendola has been excellent for us. Um, so I mean, if it's like another like one one year like less than two million dollar deal, then maybe that'd be fine. But and then Chris Conley, um, I think I'd be fine letting him walk, depending on uh, how we plan to address the draft later on. Um, if we like grab a wide receiver so somewhere in like third round or something, um, I'd probably be fine with that with letting Chris Conley go. Like he did make some plays for us, but at the same time, like I don't know how much he would ask, and at the same time, he's like thirty almost. So there's there's one t- thing to uh, consider. Jordan Aikens, he can probably go since we got br- drafted Dr- Brevin Jordan, and maybe um, since Pep Hamilton may run two tight end sets. Um, I think we still might have Pharaoh Brown on the roster, so that that will be someone. Or we might draft a tight end, as we always do every year. Um, and then Jacob Martin, he kind of had an underwhelming season. So, And just based on the report, um, it seems like Texans are going to part ways with him. Um, but, but yeah, any any of the names that I met, or also Christian Kirksey, like you mentioned, like linebackers seem to be disposable. Um, in this, like, Lovey Smith's uh, defense, like, yeah. he can adjust to it, but, um, yeah. I would say Justin Britt would be an interesting guy to bring back the center, of course. I think he was another, you know, leader of the team, high-energy guy. It's always good to have a veteran presence on the team. I don't think he would ask for too much. Um, he's been through a couple injury issues in the past and had a little bit this season. I think overall he played solid. I think he does project as a little bit more of a zone blocking center. He's able to pull and, you know, kind of be a little powerful in that aspect too, which I think does fit Pep Hamilton's system, the Nocro system, a, a pretty well. We like to run with power and pulling guards and centers, kind of create mismatches, which I think Justin Britt does create mismatches with his size and power, and the kind of agility that he brings to the center position. And I do expect the Texans to bring back guys like John Weeks, the long snapper, A.J. Moore, the captain of the special teams. And, you know, obviously you got the tight end, Anthony Auclair, blocking tight end. You seem like you got a lot of love there. But one guy we should absolutely not re-sign is David Johnson, person who was acquired in that horrid DeAndre Hopkins trade. Texans need to cut ties with him as soon as possible. You need to get past the bad part of that history, kind of move on from that situation. I think that'd be really good for both parties. A fresh start is definitely needed with David Johnson. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I mean, I really hope the Texans also try to like a snag a late round running back sometime in the draft um, to compensate for losing David Johnson, even though, and we're going to still have Rex Burkhead under contract. You played pretty solid for us actually. So, um, so yeah, if we have like Rex Burkhead and then Scotty Phillips, I believe, still on the roster. So I mean, our running back room is obviously has a, a huge room for improvement. Um, but but yeah, David Johnson should go, and then Terod Taylor, he's also a free agent. Depending on what he believes his role should be on this team, like does he still believe he's a starter? Or I'm sure he's been pretty um professional about all of this. But it's clear from like the press conferences or interviews that this is going to be Davis Mills' team, at least for the near, near future. So Terod Taylor, whether I don't know if he's going to get a starting opportunity elsewhere. So it seems like he's going to be a backup regardless. Um, so if if that is the case, then um, then he, he might as well just stay here if he's on a team-friendly deal. If not, then we could always pursue like another... Um, quarterback. I know there's some people suggesting like Tyler Huntley. He's also a free agent. Maybe we could bring some competition in the quarterback room for Davis Mills. Who knows? But uh, but yeah, I think Terod Taylor. It's like you know, if he stays, it's fine. If he goes, that's fine. Like it doesn't really matter too much. Also, forgot to mention Gronk Christian. 
he he had some bouts where he's like he showed he like was pretty solid and then other times it's like okay um uh, i feel like maybe as like a backup tackle it's all obviously fine like he did he did okay for what he he was like given so um and and seeing how Titus and Tunsil get hurt like periodically, like it's pretty rare f- to see both of them play together. So to have like somewhat of a serviceable tackle, um, and Grand Christian would be fine. Um, and we still have Charlie Heck, so, um, so yeah, there's that. Um, but yeah, any last like um, any final thoughts before we wrap the video? Yeah, like I feel like this free agency that we had last season is gonna be really similar to what we're gonna do this year. Nick Casares is gonna keep trying to find some building blocks on this team, try to find guys on low contracts that have a good season. He's gonna reward those guys with contract extensions, and they're hopefully gonna be crucial parts to the team. You know, you're gonna have to take risks. You're gonna have to just give players a chance on like a rebuilding team like the Texans are, and just see what happens. So don't be surprised if the Texans sign the most free agents in the NFL once again this season. Yeah, and I mean, this approach, it's actually not that bad, and I haven't, like, seen it before, but, like, just like ca- like you said, like, casting a wide net and then rewarding the ones who do show out and make them, like, probably, like, solid, like, uh, foundational pieces to your team. Probably not, like, found- when I say foundational, not, like, not, like, core pieces, but, like, like solid guys, that, like, glue guys almost, that will keep your team together. So, I think that this approach is very effective so far and so yeah we'll see about that and obviously our cap space we don't have a lot of cap space but we can obviously with trading watson that will create a lot of cap um if we do decide to trade tunso that will create some cap space so there's a lot of things that the texans can do to create more cap and as far as like and then we'll make like a a video uh, more about like free agents the texans should target um and see like i don't know if the texans will necessarily make a splash move and signing a huge player but i mean hey if nick casero goes all out um i'm definitely fine with that too but yeah that's pretty much it for the video let us know your thoughts um on who we should keep or who we should uh let go as always be sure to like subscribe and turn on post notifications thank you for watching peace